worthy of it today. Our God is alive. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's go clap. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tooth till I met you. You called my name and I ran out of that grave.
sing hallelujah, the Lamb was overcome. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb is overcome.
Hallelujah. Praise God. You can be seated. Whew. I don't know if I can keep doing these announcements. This presence of God is so thick up here every time I come up here. Welcome to 5M Church, everybody. Happy yeah. Resurrection Day. Hallelujah. Oh, God is so good. We have some very important announcements for you before we get into our word. Hallelujah. Today is already an amazing day. I just can't even wait to see what God has next. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So during our service, to ensure quiet, 
um, just there's quiet during service we can all receive. If you have children that maybe are having some mental challenges or being a little bit loud, um, we don't want you to leave. We want you to go to the welcome table in the lobby and you and your child just during the ministry, the preaching of the service, will go into a special room where you can watch on television um, the apostles' message and then you'll come back in for the ministry time, amen? Because we love children here. We want everybody to receive freedom. Hallelujah, praise God. Well, this week, live streams are back, everybody. Hallelujah. There will be miracles, miracles on Zoom this Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And those miracles are amazing. Don't miss out. Those are so powerful. Zoom is on every platform. Every platform, Apostle Catherine will be ministering this Wednesday at 12. And then the Instagram subscriber live will only be on Instagram for the live portion. And that's a special um, bonus for those who subscribe to Apostle's page on Instagram. If you want to do that and you haven't yet, you can go to her page after service, go up to the top corner, click the three little dots at the top, and you can become a subscriber. And then you can come on live when she's answering your questions. You can put your questions in and she answers them. And so many of these answers are so filled with wisdom and knowledge and anointing from an apostle. And we just don't, you don't get that everywhere. So be sure to tune in. Amen. That's going to be Instagram subscriber live. 4 p.m. Hallelujah. And that is going to be on Wednesday as well? Hallelujah. Friday. I'm sorry. I meant I didn't get that on my notes. Are you new to 5F? If you are new to 5F, we want to know who you are. We want to connect with you. You have a connection card on your seat. Please fill that in. Put your name. Put your email Mark that you want to receive information, the special messages that Apostle has, has released that are so powerful for your life. One of them is how to receive complete deliverance, and then the other one is how to maintain your deliverance. And then those will be emailed to you. Be sure to take those connection cards after service and take them to the welcome booth up there in the front. Amen? Hallelujah. Also, we invite you to share your testimony here at 5F Church. And it goes around the whole world. Your testimony is so powerful. Your testimony is, is the opening up of eyes of so many people to see that God will be faithful to them in their situation as well. And your testimony glorifies God in ways you can't even imagine. Also, you overcome the devil by sharing your testimony. Amen? Amen. So after service, we have a testimony video team that wants to record your video, uh, video your testimony. So if you'd go to the table after service, our team will meet you back there. And anything that's happened to you at 5F Church that's been an encounter with God, many of you have received deliverance. Many of you have received healing. Many of your children have received healing. You've received financial breakthrough. You've, encounter, you've had encounters with God. You've gone from old wine to new wine. However God has ministered to you through this ministry, we want you to share it. So that would be after service. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you are a musician or a singer, you want to be part of 5F or you're already planted here, we want to know to be able to have you serve possibly on our worship team. Amen. So on the back of that connection card, you'll just write if you're a singer, if you're a musician, what instrument you play, and then take that up to the welcome table in the lobby after service because the worship team, were you so blessed? Aren't you so blessed? It's amazing. The worship of the presence of God is so powerful in this place. Hallelujah. And I want to make the announcement of the upcoming life-changing, life-changing Flourish Conference. <laughs> this is not going to be an average church conference, so don't expect that. This is going to be so powerful. This is going to be a time of the most powerful impartation that you have ever received in your life. It will change you forever. It's going to be so filled with the power and the presence of God and the anointing. 
This is going to be, we're so close. We're so close. We're literally less than a month away. April 26th and 27th here in Los Angeles. Those of you watching, get your plane tickets. Get your tickets to the conference. The tickets to the conference are available on flourishconference.org or 5fchurch.org. You will purchase one ticket for the Friday and Saturday conference. And that will, that means children are free, under 12 and under are free. There's also going to be a special impartation service on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. with the Apostle. And Apostle Catherine is going to have a Q&A service, excuse me, a Q&A service on Saturday morning. That's a bonus ticket. So you want to purchase that too. And you definitely want to come Friday night, all day Saturday, and then stay Sunday for Sunday service here at 5F. This is for our family global. Amen? Amen. It's going to be amazing. And we, we also have now provision for American Sign Language. There's going to be ASL translation as well as Spanish. It is going to be for everyone. You definitely want to come. We do have a very special video we'd like you to watch. Amen. to live an abundant life for the glory of God, to be the light of the world. You are meant to thrive, to prosper, to flourish. Barrenness and stagnancy is a work of the devil to try to stop you from being who you were called to be. It's time to break free from what has held you back. It's time to flourish. tickets. Amen. Amen. God's going to make a way. Listen to last week's service, Apostle released. God's going to make a way for everybody to come who wants to come. Amen. So without any further delay, I'm going to ask you to stand and welcome the ministry of our beautiful pastor, Apostle Catherine Crick, leader of 5F Church. Woo! Hallelujah. He is risen. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Are you ready to encounter the resurrecting power of Jesus today? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. You can have a seat. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you're going to do today, Lord. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. What a special day today is. Amen. Amen. We are celebrating today the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is why we are saved. This is why we can receive abundant life and healing and freedom because of what Jesus has done for us. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to welcome every one of you who is visiting us for the first time today. If that's you, can you raise your hand? Welcome. Welcome. We are so blessed to have you with us. I want to welcome everyone watching online, all of our online family across the world. Welcome. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. And we are so blessed to have you joining us at all different times of the day and night. And be expectant for God to move in power through the screen and touch you. He's doing miracles through the screen all the time. There is seriously no limits or boundaries to God's power. Revival is now. And that's one of the big meanings of it is there's no limits. God is moving in tremendous power. So be expectant. Let your faith arise so that you don't miss out. So you can receive. And I want to encourage you all watching online to share this with your friends and your family. This is probably how you are here today and how you have received miracles from God and true life. And so do this same thing that you had done to you so other people may receive, so this gospel may spread, this good news, this full gospel of Jesus Christ, that the Savior, healer, and deliverer is here to set you free and to heal you. Amen. Hallelujah. I also want to welcome everyone who's traveled to be here with us today. If you've traveled across the U.S., the country, can I see any, your hands, if that's you, to be with us today? 
if you've traveled from other, oh, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah, we are blessed to have you with us. Where did you travel from? Miami, welcome, amazing. And uh, international visitors, do we have international visitors? Where are you from? Melbourne, Australia, welcome, amazing, amazing. Anywhere else? Yes. Phoenix, welcome. And I heard we have Mexico, visitors from Mexico. Welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. We are so blessed to have you with us today, and we are so excited for what God's going to do in your life today, the miracles you will receive. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for us. We are remembering today what Jesus has done for us. On the cross, he paid the ultimate price, the ultimate sacrifice. He was tortured before he even got on the cross. By his stripes, we are healed, the Bible says. And this is speaking of the wounds that he received on his back from scourging, from whipping that happened to him, that, 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 that his enemies were whipping him, scourging him. And this was ripping flesh, his flesh off of his body, and flesh and blood, and so it created stripes, wounds. And it says, by his wounds or stripes, we are healed. So what that means is there was so much power in his blood. So much power in his blood that was shed when he endured that scourging. That it released supernatural power to heal you today. To heal and deliver you today. That's why we believe in healing and deliverance from Jesus. Because the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus, 10, John 10.10 10 says, I have come that you would have life and have it more abundantly. So a big meaning of that is that you would have healing. Where the devil came and brought bondage and sickness, you would have healing and freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we believe that this is our inheritance from God because of what Jesus did before he even went on the cross, shedding that blood, and on the cross. There is so much power in the blood of Jesus. It's the most powerful force in the world is what his blood did. Praise God. It saved us, healed us, freed us. And so on the cross, he took away all of our sin, the curse of sin, the power of sin. He took that away. He removed the grip that the devil had over our lives. And so he saved us from a life of torment from the devil, a life of hell for eternity. That's what he saved us from. Amen. And he saved us from a life of being slaves to sin. The Bible says we are now no longer slaves to sin. Because of what Jesus did on the cross for us, he took that, that power where we were slaves, that power of the devil. He removed that. And so a lot of believers don't understand part of what Jesus did on the cross was he removed that power that you would be a slave to sin. You don't need to be a slave to sin anymore. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you can live a pure life in the will of God, pleasing God, walking by his spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he gave us an inheritance of abundant life. We became co-heirs with Jesus. So we have an inheritance from God now because of what Jesus did on the cross. We have an inheritance of abundant life. And that means abundant life in every area. It doesn't mean that there won't be pain or suffering in this world. But it means that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we can still have peace and joy. More peace and joy that people without Jesus have in their best days where the, all of their dreams came true, we can have more peace and joy in the valley of the shadow of death than them. We can have a life of contentment every day. This is the supernatural blessing, inheritance of abundant life, part of what that means. Now we have a relationship with God as, as the Holy Spirit has come and lives inside of us. This is what Jesus did. He tore the veil so there's no longer a mediator we have to go through to get to God. 
but we can have communion and intimacy with God every single second of every single day. Hallelujah. This is what Jesus did for us on the cross. This is part of your inheritance of abundant life so that you no longer have to have a life of loneliness. Without Jesus, no matter if you have the best friends in the world, the best husband or wife, most amazing children, you will still be lonely because only Jesus can fill that void inside that was meant for him to fill. That void of loneliness, of emptiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And part of this inheritance of abundant life is restoration and what has been lost is, 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 is healing where there has been division in marriages, in relationships, restoration. Part of this inheritance is that where there was death in different areas in life, whether physical death or spiritual deaths, death of dreams, death of hope, death of relationships, you could have resurrection. Hallelujah. Resurrection and restoration. This is what your inheritance from God looks like, your inheritance of abundant life. And once again, this inheritance of abundant life means healing and freedom. This is a big part of the gospel that's been lost. This is a big part of the gospel that's being restored in this revival right now. Many people have heard only part of the gospel. They've only heard that Jesus came to take away the power of sin and now Holy Spirit can come and live in your life and you can have relationship with God, which is true. And, and m many people have only heard the part of the gospel where you will go to heaven when you die. You won't go to hell, which is true. It's all true, but it's only part. It's not the full gospel. And many people, it stops just there for them. They don't know that healing and freedom and abundant life in all areas, even for provision, provision that you wouldn't be lacking. That is part of your inheritance. That's part of what Jesus did on the cross, was give this to you by his power. Hallelujah. So it is, it is by grace through faith we receive. We receive this precious gift of eternal life, this precious gift of intimacy with, the, with God, with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus, this precious gift of abundant life in every area, peace and joy and healing and freedom and unity and restoration and resurrection life. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is by grace through faith. And my people perish because of lack of knowledge. So people have been perishing because they haven't known something. They haven't heard something. This great part of this, this part of the great news, they have not heard it. So therefore, they could not have faith in it. Because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So I've come to tell you today, this is what is available for you. This is what Jesus has done for you. He has provided abundant life for you in every area. Healing, freedom, peace, joy, relationship with him. A life overflowing. Just believe. And by his grace, you will receive it. You will receive it today. Amen? Hallelujah. It's time for some of you today. You have only received part of the gospel. You've only heard it, and therefore you've only received part of the good news in your life, part of your inheritance. For many of you today will be the day you will receive the full gospel. You will receive your full inheritance. You will receive freedom and healing and abundant life and peace and joy and no distance between you and God. This is the, the, the greatest thank you we can give to God, to Jesus, for what he did for us. And to God the Father for sac sacrificing his son for us. This is the greatest gift we can give him is to receive. May, 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 may he receive the reward of his suffering today. The reward. He did it for his love for you. And imagine how sad it makes him when you don't receive the gift that was the ultimate sacrifice and price, the, the biggest price tag. 
Imagine you, your children, you spent the most money and the most sweat and tears, and even maybe it took years and years for you to get this great gift that you know would bless them beyond anything else, and you're so excited for them to receive it. You know how much joy it's going to bring them. You know how it's going to make them have more revelation of your love for them. Imagine they reject it. Imagine how that would grieve your heart. That's how it is for God. That's, that's the great importance of sharing the full gospel, of not being ashamed of the full gospel, proclaiming it boldly so that people don't reject. Some people are rejecting not to be mean to God, but because they've never heard the truth. So it's, it's important we take sharing the gospel, the full gospel, seriously. Amen. It's so important. So everyone... All of God, all of the, all children of God can be saved and receive this an abundant life. Amen. Hallelujah. Mark 16, 1. Saturday evening when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, and Salome went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. He is risen. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you before he died. Hallelujah. So when Jesus died, it was finished. And when he rose from the grave, this, this was, the, this was the, 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 the ultimate finishing of all of the works of the devil, the ways he's, he's had a hold on our lives. And this was the moment of salvation. This was the moment everything changed. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And, and part of our, another part of our inheritance of abundant life is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in our lives, helping us, empowering us to live by the Spirit. And the power of God, the Holy Spirit coming in power. The Holy Spirit coming in his anointing. Anointing means power of God that is placed in vessels. And so this is a promise Jesus has made. All who believe, these signs will follow them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. They shall cast out demons as some of these signs. And he has said to his disciples back more than 2,000 years ago, the original disciples, and he's saying this to us today. Preach. I'm commanding you to do this. Preach. Saying that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Has come near. And heal the sick, and cast out demons. Hallelujah. And raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. So he's commanded this to us today, and he's given us the power for all who will believe and all who will be surrendered so that we, to, we can receive this full inheritance. You need to surrender to God fully to receive this full inheritance. So, today, we have been given the power of God, those who are surrendered, to release the power of God, to heal the sick by God's power, to cast out demons by God's power, to raise the dead by God's power. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. This is the good news. The good news of Jesus Christ. 
And so when you share any part of this gospel, you're sharing the good news. You're sharing the gospel. When you share any part, when you say, Jesus heals, Jesus can heal you, Jesus can free you, you're sharing the gospel. Gospel means good news. You're sharing the good news. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So we thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for us. We don't take it lightly. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this ultimate sacrifice. We thank you, Jesus, for what you endured for us. We thank you, Lord, for enduring the worst kind of pain and punishment that there ever could be on this earth to any human being. And you were fully human. You felt that pain just as much as we would feel that pain. And you did it with the joy set before you for us. We thank you, Jesus, that you did this for us. We thank you, Jesus. We are so grateful. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. And we receive this inheritance. We receive this abundant life. We receive salvation. We receive your Holy Spirit. We receive re the greatest relationship in the world. Relationship with you. We receive peace and joy. We receive healing, your healing power. We receive freedom, deliverance. We receive abundance, no lack, abundance of provision. We receive unity and restoration. We receive resurrection in our lives. We receive it all, Jesus. We want to value it all by saying yes to it all. Thank you, Jesus, and by doing all that's required to receive it, seeking you, being hungry, making sacrifice, repenting from our sins, surrendering everything, we will do it all, whatever the cost, to receive these gifts that you've given us. As we receive these gifts from Jesus, we become the brightest light. We are called to be the light of the world. But if you only receive part of these gifts, part of the inheritance, you're not going to be a bright light. There's many stars in the sky, but then there's stars that are super bright. Those who will surrender everything and receive the full inheritance from God will be looking the most supernatural on this world, in this world. They will be manifesting heaven. They will be reflecting heaven, the kingdom of heaven. They will be looking like Jesus, sounding like Jesus the most. Therefore, being the brightest lights. And the brighter light you will be is the more attractive you will be. The more souls you will attract to Jesus. The more souls you will attract to Jesus to then be able to receive the full inheritance of abundant life. Hallelujah. This is why it's so important. We receive. We receive so we can give. We receive so we can shine bright. We receive it all so that the lost can be saved, healed, and free, and know who really Jesus is. That he does heal and deliver. He's that good. This is his love. Amen. Amen. We say yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord, to all you've given us, to this full inheritance from God. We say yes. Let us be the brightest lights possible and fulfill our purpose on this earth. Amen. Praise God. Matthew 26, verse 31. So after the last, at, at the last supper, after the last supper, when they were on their way to the Mount of Olives, it says, Jesus said to the disciples, to the 12 closest disciples to Jesus, he says, on the way, Jesus told them, tonight, all of you will desert me. For the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. 
But after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter declared, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. As I was just thinking of the, up, of the Last Supper, this reminded me that I just want to make a little announcement before I continue with the word. For those of you watching online, we will be taking communion today. Praise God. It's going to be so powerful. And I wanted to share with all of you watching online to prepare communion, to, to get bread or a cracker, juice or water if you don't have it, and just have it ready for later on in the service so you can take communion with us. Amen? Praise God. So back to the scripture, Matthew 26, 31. I'm going to read this again. On the way, Jesus told them, tonight all of you will desert me, all 12 disciples. For the scripture say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter declared, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. But Jesus then replied, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. No, Peter insisted. Even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all, of the, all the other disciples vowed the same. All the other disciples vowed the same. So then we're going to fast forward. We're going to go to Luke 24, uh, verse 54. So this was after, um, this was when Jesus is, is, is arrested and brought away. It says, then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, this man also was with him, but he denied it, saying, woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord. How he said to him, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now we're going to go to Matthew 26, verse 55. Now this was when um, he was first uh, being arrested as well. Then Jesus said to the crowd, am I some dangerous revolutionary that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there teaching every day. But this is all happening to fulfill the words of the prophets as recorded in the scriptures. At that point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. So all of the close disciples, the 12, all of them fled, hid just as Jesus had said they would. They were that afraid. They, they were forgetting the words of Jesus. Jesus said that all, would this, all this would happen, but it didn't mean the devil was going to win. There was going to be victory. This was just necessary, the necessary sacrifice, but there would be victory. But these disciples were forgetting what Jesus had said to them on multiple occasions. These disciples were forgetting what Jesus said to them, prophesied to them, that you will all leave me. You know, they forgot it all. They fled and ran from Jesus. Isn't that sad? When you put yourself in the shoes of Jesus Jesus, who was 100% God, but 100% human. Imagine how that would feel for Jesus. 
not good, right? So, Matthew 27, verse 57. Now, when evening had come, there came a rich man from Arm Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. So, this guy was a rich man, and he was a disciple of Jesus, but he wasn't, he wasn't one of the twelve. Because you know there were many more disciples of Jesus, not just the twelve, but the twelve were the closest. The ones who, who, got, who Jesus trusted the most. The ones who would receive the anointing to do the work of God after Jesus resurrected, sent his Holy Spirit to be with them. So there was this other disciple, and it, it says, This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be given to him. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. So this was after Jesus was crucified. He asks for the body. He had a tomb that he wanted to give to Jesus for his body to be laid there. So he asked for the body. Pilate commanded the body to be given to him. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had honed out of the rock, and he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. Um, we also see an, we also see a, a, a man carrying the cross of Jesus as Jesus is headed to be crucified because he was so beaten that Jesus couldn't carry this heavy cross on his own. He was so wounded and in pain and and shedding so much blood that he already that he couldn't carry it so there was another guy that was asked to help to carry the cross for him so imagine the closest disciples of Jesus were nowhere to be seen in in Jesus's darkest hour the most painful moments for Jesus they weren't there to help carry the cross to have that honor and help carry that torture, that pain for him. They weren't there to wrap his body in linen. The closest ones weren't. It was someone on the, out, on the outside. It wasn't the inner circle, closest disciples, to carry Jesus' body, to wrap it, to put, it in the, to put his body in the tomb. Now, going back to the, the story of Peter denying, Peter had been with Jesus for three years as a close disciple. And through all of those three years, he never denied Jesus. Never, not even close. But when persecution came, when the trial came, he denied him. He failed the test. So today, for servants of God, when the persecution comes, when the trials come, that is the real test to see who are really your friends, your partners, who really are the real ones, who really mean what they say with the real pure hearts, soldiers for Jesus. You don't know when things are going good, when things are comfortable. But when the persecution comes, when things get tough, that's when you know. And when persecution comes to servants of God, many times people think that that's like, a real test for the servant of God, that that persecution is really a test for them. And it is partially, but really the big test when that comes, when that persecution comes to the servant of God, is for the, the believers, the believers who are serving in that work of God under that leader. 
the test is mostly for them. Because God knows there's victory. God knows that the servant of God is strong, will, will pass the test, and will keep going. But God knows that really the believers need this test. Amen? It, now, it said that when, when the rooster crowed, Peter had denied Jesus three times. And so, today, when persecution comes, when enemies start speaking, Pharisees start speaking... When the rooster crows today, when the enemies start crowing, that's when be many believers get quiet and don't stand. Stand with Jesus and his work. Stand with Jesus' servants, but they become quiet and deny some even deny miracles they have received. They testify, I received this miracle. But then when the enemies start speaking, they become afraid of what will happen to them, of what people will think of them when they keep testifying the same truth that hasn't changed about this miracle they have received. About this miracle they have received at this ministry when it's being persecuted. They don't want to testify then. <laughs> but the truth remains. Jesus did that miracle. You were truly healed. You were truly free. It's fun to testify about it. It's exciting to testify about it when there's no persecution. But when there's persecution, many people have a hard time continuing to speak up for Jesus. It, this is a big uh, trial for many believers, not so much betraying like what Judas did, though that's out there for sure, that trial, that, that temptation is there. But the big temptation for many believers who are in this move of God, in revival, where in ministries, or receiving from ministry, a ministry where God's power is moving, the real temptation is to deny when persecution comes. That's the big temptation to become silent or to even flat out deny. And this is important for us to be aware of. You know, you see what the disciples did, and this should humble us and make us realize if it happened to them, the ones that Jesus handpicked to be the very first ones, I better watch it. That temptation will come for me too. I gotta be ready. Peter, Peter denied not one, not two, but three times of even knowing Jesus for fear of what people would think and what may happen in his life. And this can be this temptation today. The, the really hard thing for many people is to die to their ego, is to let go of caring what people think. And so when this persecution comes, when, pe when enemies start speaking, they start speaking about a ministry you're receiving from, that temptation comes where many don't want to speak up for fear of what people think. Maybe people are afraid of even their, maybe their jobs or other things in life. But we got to do better than that because Jesus calls us to serve only him, not serve ourselves, not serve our ego, not serve our earthly masters, like earthly employees. We are called to only serve Jesus. 
And we know that when we serve Jesus, we can trust him. We can trust that he will protect us, that he will vindicate us, that he will show that he's with us, that his supernatural favor and grace will be over us. And even if things happen because people are influenced by the enemy, even if you were to lose a job or something because of your faith, God's going to provide something better. <laughs> whenever, whenever the devil takes something from you or, you know, whenever someone influenced by the devil hurts you, the devil has to pay. The, you, you have to receive what you lost and more. God sees it all. Heaven sees it all. It's not missed. And you will receive extra blessing because of what you endured, because of what you went through. So it's never something to be worried about even if you lose things for your faith. Amen? Because God is on your side. If God is for us, who can be against us? If it seems like enemies against us are winning, it's only looking that way temporarily. They've never won. God's about to shock everyone, shock your enemies, showing how he is with you, showing that they can never stop you. Your enemies can never stop you. Hallelujah. So we got to have this reverence and fear of God. We got to understand that we are called to walk, receive persecution. <laughs> we are called to endure persecution. This is our calling. This is, if you didn't know this, I'm letting you know this right now. Part of your calling, part of being a child of God is going through persecution. And if you're not going through persecution, then you, you are, may not be a true child of God. I mean, you might, you might not be receiving Jesus in his fullness. Jesus who comes in power. Because that's what the devil hates more than anything, is Jesus coming in power to destroy the works of the devil, to break the yokes of the devil. And so when that's what you're doing, when that's what you're a part of, when you're part of a move of God, a ministry that carries the power of God to destroy yokes and to destroy the works of the devil, that's when you are making the devil angry. That's when he will influence people to persecute you. So this is, our, this is part of our calling, is to endure persecution. The Bible says, blessed are you who go through persecute, are persecuted for righteousness' sake. We are persecuted for righteousness' sake because the, the, the world doesn't understand the things of the Spirit. The world hates Jesus, and the world hates believers. And the Pharisees, the, the re religious people of today, think that the power of God is of the devil. They're blinded, just like the Pharisees in the times of Jesus. So we have all of that against us. But greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. If God is for us, who can be against us? Meaning, yes, there is so much hate and persecution that will come, but it cannot ever triumph over you. It can never lead to you being stopped to do what God has called you to do. It can never lead to you not accessing full abundant life from Jesus. Never. Hallelujah. So just as Jesus with the joy set before him went to the cross for us, with the joy set before us, we happily endure persecution for the sake of Jesus. I don't mean it feels happy, just the same way that it didn't feel happy for Jesus to go to the cross. He actually asked the cup to be taken from him, if it was possible. But he said, not my will, let your will be done. 
and, and he wanted God's will more than, more than his feelings. And God's will was for him to make that sacrifice for you because of his love for you. And so that's what Jesus wanted above everything else. So that's why it was the joy set before him. The, that, that joy of that spiritual truth in his heart and that covenant with God the Father he made when he said, yes, I will do this. That trumped the feelings. And so your yes to Jesus, your full yes to Jesus, your surrender, that becomes your joy set before you enduring persecution. So it's time we accept that. We, get, we accept that call to endure persecution for Jesus' sake. So, so many people, they don't want to share in persecution when it comes upon a servant of God that they're leading, that, that's leading them. Uh, you know, Peter and Paul and all of the apostles, they had Jesus in them. They had the power of Jesus in them. And, and, and they were persecuted, but it was really Jesus in them being persecuted. Jesus chooses to move in power through vessels to accomplish his work. So we aren't just preaching about Jesus and healing the sick and freeing the oppressed, the oppressed on our own. It's Jesus who's doing it all through us. We are intertwined. We are one. And so here at Fivefold Church, this is Jesus' house. This is Jesus' church. And he is present every single time. He's not just present, but he's the leader of this church. And so the word that comes forth, it's not my words, but it's I'm one with God. And so when I come and speak, especially as I speak here to minister to you all, it's not like what I feel to say, what Catherine feels to say, what Catherine feels is a good sermon to say, but it's the Holy Spirit speaking through me as I'm one with God. And so I die, I, I die to myself. So I'm a vessel, you see me, my human body, but I die to myself so God can come and through me and speak through me, take over my mouth. So, and, and, and when I pray for people, when, when healing and deliverance happens in this place, it's not me. It's not me doing the miracles, not even 1%. It's God doing all the miracles. It's Jesus doing all the miracles himself. So he's a spirit, so he's invisible. But if you can renew your mind and see in the spiritual realm, it's, you might as well see him as a human body right here, releasing the healing and the freedom and casting the demons out of all of the people. It's all the miracles that take place. That's 100% Jesus' power. It's not 10% Catherine and 90% Jesus' power. It's not like I, I think this is what many people don't realize. It's not like I possess supernatural powers. No, I'm simply a vessel for Jesus to do everything, for Jesus to move in power and do all the miracles, 100% of the miracles. It's 100% Jesus' power. You know, amen? It's not like me 10% uh, uh, putting emotion upon people. That's one of the big reasons why God calls me to minister in simplicity. So that it can really be 100%. So that it won't be 10% emotion that I brought to people and 90% God's power. You know, I could try to rival you up, Holy Spirit, in this place right now. Do you feel him? Oh, I feel him. Oh, he's about to do miracles right here on you. Do you hear right, you right now? He's going to do a miracle in your life right now. I can come with physical force. Do you feel the power of God on you now? Do you feel it? And, and maybe the power of God is there in me, but I'm like getting in the way of God to do completely his thing, of God to be 100%. And it can be confusing for people even receiving the miracles. 
was that my emotion? Or was that God? I don't know if I, and they might have received a miracle, but they could be confused. I don't know. And of course, there's been counterfeit stuff in the past, and so it makes people confused. Is this just another one of those? You know? And so even if the power's there, the power of God's there, it can confuse people. They can lose faith and lose what God did in their lives. So that's one of the big reasons why God calls me and God's calling us in this revival to minister in this way. Because me, I'm a charismatic person. Like, I, I could preach like that. You know, I mean, <laughs> I wanted to be an actress and a singer, you know. I could do that. If, that would be fun for me, right? <laughs> but God doesn't want me to do that. <laughs> God wants me to not get in the way with theatrics. So sometimes even God will have me speak more quiet. Just so, so I, don't, I don't get in the way. I don't try to get people's emotions going, but Holy Spirit can just be centered and be glorified so much. The most. He can be glorified the most. And it can be known, this was God. This was only God. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why there's not much, I mean, there's not, that's why there's not a lot of touching even. That I don't touch people a lot. It's having to do with the same thing. To really show how real God is, how powerful he is, and how it's 100% him. It's not, oh, I, I, I think maybe they were pushing. So was that really God's power that made the person fall down? Because it, it kind of looks like the person was pushing, right? It's time eyes are opened up to see that God's power is real and that he's all we need and that he's so powerful and that he can do any kind of miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah. So with all that being said, remember that the work of God is Jesus' work. It's not Catherine's work. It's not Catherine's church. Any true ministry is 100% Jesus' work. 100% Jesus' work. We need to remember this. Because many times people, they're, they deny, uh, ministers get attacked. Ministers get all sorts of stones thrown at them, words spoken against them, false accusations, all these things. And many times the, the people that, are, that have received there, that are planted there at that church, they forget this, that this is Jesus' work. And they see it as a person. They see it as Catherine. They see it as, oh, Catherine's being attacked. Oh, Catherine's church is being attacked. But that's not the spiritual way to look at it. Is Jesus, Jesus being attacked? Is Jesus' church, Jesus' ministry being attacked? Jesus' miracles being questioned? Jesus being given false accusations about and this is, I'm talking about not the miracles, but also the preaching. Also the preaching. As I shared, it is the Holy Spirit speaking. So even the teaching, the new wine, the new wine that is released, the revelation that is released, it's Jesus. It is absolutely Jesus. I tell you, I do not speak on my own accord. I speak confidently because of what God has revealed to me, of what he's showed me. Hallelujah. So, so we need to remember how serious it is when we are quiet, when persecution is taking place at the ministry we are a part of. It's a, big, it's, it's, it's a bad and big thing to keep quiet, to stop testifying what you used to testify, to deny, because it's denying Jesus. It's not just denying the servant of God, but it's denying Jesus. Uh, 
um, we should, we should, you know, I shared how we're called to persecution, and so whatever ministry you're a part of, I know you here are, it's Fivefold Church, but if people are watching online, this is for everybody. Whatever ministry you are a part of that's a true anointed ministry, a true church, Jesus' church, there absolutely will be persecution, and not just one time. It'll happen continually because the devil doesn't sleep. (laughs) Devil wants to stop it, but he can't. He wants to stop the work of God, but he can't. Amen. But if you are really part of the true work of God, this work of God, which also means absolutely the leader, is going to be persecuted. We need to be united and carry it together. Why, why the random guy carrying the cross? Why the random guy carrying the cross? You should be carrying the cross. You should be sharing in the the persecution. The ones close. Why Joseph Arimathea, a disciple on the outside, being bold and unashamed, going to Pilate, can I have the body of Jesus? Why, Why not the close disciples? Amen? So, you know, to, in today's time, so the way Jesus was persecuted back then, he's still persecuted today. I really want you to, to grab this revelation. We many times think Jesus is just up in heaven, and we're here worshiping him in heaven, and we're here talking about him up in heaven, and we're here doing miracles for him. Well, he's in heaven. It's him. It's his ministry. It's his work. It's his miracles. It's his words. And so, as Jesus, as Jesus moves through servants of God, the leaders, they many times are the, the targets and getting all these words, uh, uh, horrible words spoken against them. Many times the believers left, leave their leader to be fried, fried by the enemies. Leave them alone to take on everything and not standing up and saying, it's true that Jesus has done these things, that he's done these miracles, which definitely will be sharing in the persecution. Others will then attack. But we should say, yes, we should carry that cross. Jesus called us to pick up our cross. That's powerful that that guy, Simon, that he picked up the cross for Jesus. So when we're being persecuted in the times, when the, when, when the ministry you're part of, when your leader is being persecuted, it's time for you to pick up the cross of persecution and share in that. Amen? Matthew 10, verse 32. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. This is Jesus speaking. This is a great importance that we acknowledge him publicly. That we acknowledge the work of Jesus, the miracle he's done in our lives, and we keep acknowledging it in the hard times and the easy times, in the times when everyone's clapping with us. Wow, praise God that God did that miracle in your life. And, and then the times when people say, that's actually a work of the devil, like the Pharisees said to Jesus. In both times, we are called to publicly acknowledge Jesus. And then Jesus will publicly acknowledge us. Jesus will, in heaven and before the Father, say, This child of mine is making me proud. This child of God is with me, is with us. This child of God is helping the work of God to go forward, not just sitting there doing nothing and enjoying my benefits, but not giving back, not serving me. 
don't you want to hear, to know Jesus is talking about you like that? It's not, it's not just when you, when you die that Jesus is saying, that, the, that God is saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. He's acknowledging you publicly if you can really stand with him and publicly acknowledge him in good times and bad. Amen? Romans 1.16, Paul says, For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. For I am not ashamed of this good news. It is the power of God at work. I am not ashamed. This is our calling to, to not be ashamed. To not be ashamed that we had demonic oppression and needed a savior and deliverer to deliver us. We are not ashamed to say, I had demonic oppression. Yes, I, had, I was influenced by demons. I had bondage. I had demonic chains in my life. I had addiction. I had anxiety. I had depression. I had generational curses. And I needed Jesus to save me and deliver me. I needed Jesus to break those chains. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of this power of God that delivered and healed me. I'm not ashamed to say I wasn't perfect. I was not perfect. I was a lost. I was a sinner. I was in bondage. I was sick. And I needed Jesus. And Jesus saved me, delivered me, healed me. And now I'm no longer a slave to sin. We need to be unashamed of all of the works of Jesus, of all of the works of Jesus that make many people offended and uncomfortable. We need to be unashamed of it all. We need to be unashamed of all the ways that God moves, of his power, his anointing, making demons to suddenly tremble and scream out of people in an ear-piercing pitch, making demons to interrupt a sermon and the sermon gets a pause for a moment so that God can deliver a child of God sitting in the congregation just like he did in the temple when he preached in the Gospels. We need to be unashamed of this Jesus who does this powerful work of deliverance, of, 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 of exposing and evicting demons from people. Hallelujah. We need to be unashamed of the power of the Holy Spirit that brings fresh rhema words. Rhema means the present tense spoken word of God. We need to be unashamed of this Jesus who does a new thing, who moves outside of the box, who uses the weak and foolish things. We need to be unashamed of this Jesus who brings new wine that the religious call not of God. That say it's against the word of God. We need to be unashamed of the true new wine that Jesus is bringing. Hallelujah. We need to be unashamed of Jesus' ways of moving through vessels. So many are so offended by God moving in power through a vessel. I think because sometimes people have issues, maybe, maybe people, I mean, it has been abused in the past. There have been people who abused power in the past. And so unfortunately, that makes people, many people feel like they can't trust. Many people feel like everyone's going to be the same way. And it makes people not, not want to have, not want to see people have power. But we are called to carry God's power. Sorry. <laughs> We are called to be powerful through Christ for his glory. We are called to carry the biggest power in the world that makes every kind of demon go. We are called to carry this powerful force that makes demons tremble in our presence and be afraid of us. That's our calling. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm a, we're unashamed. 
So we need to be unashamed of God's ways that we see in the word of God from Old Testament to New Testament of putting his power, his mighty power, holding nothing back, the kind of power that does any miracles in a vessel and moving through the vessel. Jesus says to his disciples, you will do the same things I did and greater. People be offending that God's using people in great power doing miracles we haven't seen in the word. They're offended. But Jesus said it. We are not ashamed to do greater things. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are not ashamed of God's ways of using the weak and foolish things, the despised things, the unlikely vessels like David, like Moses, like every vessel we see, servant of God, they were unlikely. They were weak and foolish. There are ones people didn't want because they wanted the logical way. They wanted the... The ones who had the experience, the credentials, the connections, the endorsements, the resume, the giftings, the charisma, the looks. <laughs> People pick out who they want to be as leaders based on these things because it makes them more comfortable. Or, or it's, it's more pleasant to look at or listen to. I don't know. Whatever the reasons are, people want certain leaders. They, 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 they've chosen them in their hearts. But God never chooses who we choose. <laughs> he never chooses who we choose, who we want. <laughs> who we say, that would be a great servant of God. That would be a great leader. God doesn't choose them. <laughs> God chooses the people who are like, what? This makes no sense. That's God's ways. And guess what? We are unashamed of it. We are unashamed of God's ways of using unlikely vessels that are not liked by many. And these vessels include those without resumes of Bible school at times. Those who do not have the connections, the, the networks, the endorsements. Those who do not come from a family of ministry. Those who aren't spiritual sons and daughters of the big ministers of today. Those who are short. Those who are tall. Those who are all sorts of shapes and sizes. Those who are men and those who are women. <laughs> Hallelujah. Those who are old and those who are young. This is God's ways that we are unashamed of. And so we realize that a lot of people don't like this way of God. This way of God, this principle. We realize it offends people. People don't like it. People think it's of the devil sometimes. But we are unashamed to say, this is God. This is who God is using. This is where I've received from, etc., we are unashamed. Hallelujah. For this is the power of God at work. The power of God at work to save, to heal, and to deliver. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So I, I, today's message is, is to open your spiritual eyes. Because I think sometimes we just go through the motions of the story of the, the, the story of the crucifixion leading to up to the crucifixion and the resurrection. So, I mean, many of us have read it millions of times. We just go through the motions or, or we focus on certain parts. Like we focus on the crucifixion and we focus on the resurrection, but we miss the parts in between that can teach us a lot. And so the parts in between before the crucifixion, the resurrection, is a powerful lesson for us today. I think, I think there's a good chance that if all of us were in the disciples' shoes, that we would do the same thing as them back then. I mean, right? I mean, are we, are, are we going to say we were better than the 12 disciples? <laughs> right? <laughs> but isn't that sobering? Isn't that sobering? This is real life, remember. These were real people. This isn't a fairy tale. 
But I think that if those disciples have what we have today, which is their example, the New Testament that they didn't have, I think if they had that, they might not have made that mistake. Because the word of God is so powerful. We, we get to go glory to glory to glory. We, I mean, they paved the way, but we can do greater than them for God's glory. We can pass tests that they didn't pass. Right? Amen. It's like, it's like having a spiritual father or mother. They make mistakes that you don't have to make. If you can just be humble and listen and learn from what they tell you. So that's like the word of God. The word of God is like that, a teacher for us. Amen. And so let us take the word seriously. Let, it, let us take it as the bread that it is. Let it feed us. May this word feed you, nourish you in the form of opening your spiritual eyes. Let this word open up your spiritual eyes. Let it humble you to see that this is a temptation that will come for you if it hasn't already and that you should be ready. That if it could happen to the disciples, it could happen to you. Let it humble you. And now is the time to have more of the fear of God than ever. We are called to always have the fear of God. We should be increasing in the fear of God every day. Increasing in reverence. This is, this is the simple answer to summarize how to be able to stay in God's will. Stay in God's will every day and pass every test is to have the fear of God. To not, hallelujah. <laughs> to not take your life as a disciple of Jesus too casually. That's a mistake many people make. They take it too casually. The devil comes roaring around like a lion, seeking whom he can devour. Many Christians, they forget scriptures like these, truths like these, and they just go about their days, go about their weeks, attending church on Sunday. And then the devil sneaks up on them, and they fail the test. The fear of God means to really take Jesus and being a disciple of him seriously. Like, Every day, renewing your mind about your identity in Christ, that you're a servant of God, you're a disciple. You're not a casual, lukewarm Christian. You're not someone who, yeah, my religion is Christian, but you're a servant of God. You're a disciple of Jesus. And, and therefore, you know that, what that comes with. You know that comes with spiritual warfare. You, you were aware of the attacks that may come like the ones you learned about by the, in the word of God that I'm sharing today. You've been made aware. You've been warned. And so when every day you, you renew your mind, you have the fear of God, you take your calling seriously, that means your eyes are open and you can see the devil roaring around. You see that scheme. You see that scheme to try to get you to deny Jesus, to deny the work of God. You see that scheme coming, and you say, oh, I knew about this. I knew this day would come. God warned me, and I learned to have more fear of God than the disciples because they were warned to. So I, I decided I was going to be extra cautious have more fear of God, take him more seriously, and so that I would be ready to stand strong and don't miss this, that I wouldn't pass, that I wouldn't fail this test. Because when you, when you deny Jesus in the times of persecution, when you keep quiet about Jesus, about his work in the times of persecution, that's equal to failing a test. That's what the devil wanted. When you quit... And many people, they quit. When things get hard, when persecution comes, they quit. They say, ah, oh, this is too much. I quit. And when you quit, that's losing. 
That's what the devil wanted. So here you are. You are soldiers of Jesus here. You, you are warriors in God's revival army. So warriors, be ready. Fight the good fight of faith. Take this seriously, this spiritual war. You will have victory when you, have the, when you live in the fear of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. John 21, 15. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, okay, oh, I'm going to give you context first of all before I keep on reading. So after Jesus was resurrected, Jesus returned to the disciples a few times, and one of the times he returned to them, and, Jesus, and Peter, <laughs> he was fishing. He went back to what he was doing before. He didn't know what to do after Jesus was crucified. And Jesus appeared. And, 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 and they had breakfast together. And it says, after breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? More than fishing. More than his life before Jesus that was more comfortable. His life that he thought was his calling, but it wasn't. Do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said. You know I love you. Then take care of my sheep. Jesus said a third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. So something really powerful took place in the spiritual realm with this conversation, with Jesus asking these things. Because notice that it was three times Jesus asked him, do you love me? And it was also three times that Peter denied Jesus, did the opposite of saying, publicly acknowledging, I love you and I'm unashamed of you. But Jesus, he is full of forgiveness. He is always full of forgiveness. It doesn't no matter what you've done, even when you should have known better, his forgiveness is still there. This is part of what we received from Jesus on the cross, was forgiveness from our sins. Not just the past ones, the ones that when you are a believer and you mess up, you make a mistake, you fail tests, you sin, his forgiveness is still there. It's still available for you to receive. If you want it, if you'll receive it. So Peter could have done what Jesus did. Peter could have listened to the, to the, to the, the lies of the devil because they must have been strong. The condemnation. He could have done what Jesus did. Judas hung himself because he believed the lies of the devil that he wasn't worth living, let alone being, being used by God, doing what God wanted him to do after, for, after repenting. But Peter listened to the voice of God of love and forgiveness instead. Jesus said, do you love me? So instead of condemning Peter, instead of saying, I can't believe you did this, Instead of rejecting him and saying, well, you, I did call you to be the rock and to be the leader of my work, of my church, but I can't trust you anymore. No, Jesus still trusted him because he doesn't call us to be perfect. You may make a mistake. It doesn't mean God has lost trust in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He trusts you when you truly, genuinely repent. That's how you can earn trust even if it was any was lost, is when you earnestly repent from your heart. He will forgive you. He will wipe away what you've done. He will trust you again or continue the trust or increase in the trust. And so he didn't lose all trust in Peter. Isn't this forgiveness he has great? Hallelujah. If he can forgive Peter... And, and, and trust him still to lead a church, what about for you? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And so he, Jesus was doing a prophetic act. He was doing something so powerful. He was countering the denial that Peter made of him. He was wiping the denials away with three times asking, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And so he responded, yes, yes, yes. That wiped away that I deny him. I deny him. I don't know him. And then, and then Jesus said, okay, so I forgive you. I, I know this is the truth that you love me. I accept this words that you're speaking as truth. And I trust you. I've wiped away your denial, the things you did that were untrustworthy. I trust you. And now I'm asking you again, like I asked you before, when I said that you would be my rock in whom I would build my church, I say to you, feed my sheep. So, so Jesus is saying this to you today. Do you love me? You know, you, maybe you've denied him in the past. Maybe you've denied him three times or more. He's saying, do you love me? 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 If you denied him many, many times, he's continually saying this, doing the same thing he did for Peter. And he's saying the same thing. Will you feed my sheep then? Will you be a vessel of me in my true work, not the comfortable work of God, (laughs) not the one that that, that doesn't offend people, (laughs) But will you be a true vessel of me in my power? Feed my sheep. Testify of the miracles I've done for you that you denied. Testify about them. Testify about my work. You're feeding the sheep by doing this. This is how God's asking you to feed the sheep. is by standing with him and his work and testifying unashamedly about him, what he has done, his revival, his move, the servants he's using the miracles you've received. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I want to say, first of all, I want to say on behalf of, I want to say this to everyone, everyone watching, those of you that are planted here and planted at different churches, or maybe you're not planted anywhere yet, but I just want to say this. On behalf of all all servants of God who have been betrayed, who people have denied God working through, denied miracles people had received in their ministries, I want to say on behalf of all of them, I forgive you. And I want to say personally, me, for all of you here, if it's any of you here and all watching online, I forgive you. If you have denied the works of Jesus that have happened here at Fivefold Church or at Revivals Now events or through watching online, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and I say, you know, I, I, I see you all. Those of you, those of you who have, who have denied, I see you like Peter. I see you with that same forgiveness. Not that, oh, you're thrown out. You can't be trusted anymore. Jesus didn't do that to Peter. So I say the same to you. I receive you as a disciple. I don't reject you. I don't put a red flag on you. But I see you as Peter. I welcome you in. I trust you with a repentance, true, sincere, repentant heart. I trust you. And I say, feed the sheep. I say, testify of the miracles you've received. The ones that you have denied, start sharing them again. Stand for Jesus. Stand for the work he's doing. Stand for the miracles he's doing. Stand for him. Stand for this revival. Stand for his ways. His out-of-the-box, strange, unlikely, unpopular, offendable ways. Stand for them. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you all. I truly do. I truly do. And I say this to anyone who's denied in the past. I love you. Jesus, you know, he has so much compassion knowing how it can be hard. The temptations, the new temptations that you've never encountered before. You know, the, the attacks and the persecution you've never encountered before. It can be hard. And mistakes can happen. Jesus has this great compassion. And we are called to have that compassion too. And I have that compassion for you. I have the understanding and compassion for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We can have music. Yes. <laughs> Let there be music. Let us worship him. I just see right now this time that Holy Spirit is leading you all in, leading us in, of repentance. With repentance, we are saved, we are forgiven. With repentance, the, the, the past mistakes and sins are wiped away. And we are made new. And so I want to call you all to repentance. If this is something you need to do, if this is something you feel in your heart, for some of you, maybe it's that you haven't stood with what Jesus is doing. You've denied, you've been afraid. Repent. Just talk to Jesus in your, in your, in your own heart right now. Just in your own heart, right where you are. Just speak to him. Say, I'm sorry, Lord. I don't want to do this again. I never want to deny you. I want to hear you speak about me in front of the Father and of heaven that you're proud of me. In whatever way God is calling you to repent today. Maybe you haven't given your whole life to Jesus yet. Now is the time to turn, to repent means to turn away. Turn away from your life, from a life of sin, from a life without Jesus. And turn to Jesus. Give your life to him. Surrender your life to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I speak right now, every spirit of accusation and condemnation that's tormented you because of sin, because of denying Jesus, because of mistakes, I declare that spirit of accusation and condemnation must leave you now in Jesus' name. Those voices must be quieted from now. You are forgiven. You are loved. You are cleaned by Jesus, by his blood. Your sins are wiped away by the blood of Jesus. It's happening right now. You are clean. You are pure. You are the righteousness of God. Thank you, Jesus. I release this anointing upon you all. And I declare the love of God to fill you, the love the, of the Holy Spirit to come upon you. Receive his forgiveness. Receive his love. Receive his grace and mercy. Receive it now. Complete forgiveness. Complete. Not 90% because the one thing you did was so bad. No. Complete forgiveness right now. Say, I receive complete forgiveness. It's yours. Thank you, Jesus. Your past is removed. God no longer sees it. 
It's removed. It's wiped away. Today is a new day, a new beginning, a new life. A life of surrender to Jesus where you make him proud every day. A life of living by the Spirit, walking by the Spirit. A life of being a good soldier for Jesus. A life of victory after victory. A life of being a powerful vessel of God every day, not just on the good days. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your love. Tell him, thank you for your love. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your blood. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 We love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're taking communion today. John 6, 53, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father has sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Luke twenty-two nineteen 19, it says, And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So Jesus has commanded us to do this prophetic act of eating something like, like physical bread as a prophetic act to symbolize what we are doing when we receive Jesus. And what we do every day is we are eating his flesh, eating his blood. We are taking it inside of us. He's becoming one with us. His body is so powerful. His body carrying the power of God in it. He becomes one with us as we intake him, as we receive him in us, as we eat him eat his flesh, in taking his flesh, hallelujah. And there's the blood of Jesus that washed our sins away. It is the blood of Jesus that provided the, the, the healing power to us today. It is the blood shed, the sacrifice he made, the blood shed that has saved us and brought this inheritance from God, healing and freedom and abundant life. And so we take in his blood so when we receive Jesus, Jesus, we receive all of him. We take his body in us. 
We take his blood in us. We partake of him. We put him in us. Hallelujah. And, and so he asks us, he asks us to, to do this prophetic act of what we are doing in the spirit of taking his blood in us. Taking his blood in us and taking his body in us. And this is really powerful when we do this prophetic act because to do prophetic acts is very powerful of what happens in the spirit by doing the physical prophetic act. And it says in Luke twenty two nineteen, 19, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And now in this revival, God is bringing new wine, which means bringing revelation upon his word that many have not received. That is true revelation. Many have religious revelation of the word of God and they're following the word of God in religious ways. Just like how the Pharisees were following the word of God, but the wrong way in religious ways that was holding them back from receiving the fullness of God. So the same thing happens today where people are, are, are having wrong revelations of the word of God and it's holding them back. Religion is holding them back from receiving the fullness of Jesus. And so this is one of the new wine revelations that God has brought to us about communion. The word of God here, it says, in remembrance. Do this in remembrance. Now, there's some things that God wants us to do ritualistically. Like open the word of God every day. However, even though it's a ritual, we need to make sure we're inviting the Holy Spirit in. So we're not just doing it as a, 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 a routine, a ritual alone. But that we invite Holy Spirit upon his word as we read it amen same thing with coming to church he wants us to come every sunday he doesn't want us to do okay one week follow the holy spirit and meet three times a week and the next week meet on a monday and a thursday and the next week meet on a tuesday and the next week because we don't want to be too ritually no there's some times where rituals it's good but at the same time we need to make sure we don't be religious and too ritualistic about the ritual but we invite holy spirit in amen but then there's other things that he's not commanding us to do as a ritual. Because there's certain things that we do as a ritual that takes away the value of what he's asking us to do. Where we start just going through the motions and doing it as a tradition and having no revelation and remembrance of why we're doing this thing. And that is how communion has become. People take communion as a habit, just taking it. But what we're about to do is so sacred and so powerful. There will be healing and deliverance that takes out, that breaks out when you take communion today. It's really powerful. Jesus says in remembrance and the revelation, the, 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 the new wine, Holy Spirit revelation that God has released about what he's saying in remembrance is similar to how we don't celebrate the, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus every week. We celebrate it once a year. Now, we technically celebrate it every day, amen, but there's a special day where we, it's dedicated to the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. It's dedicated to it today, amen? Today it's in remembrance of the crucifixion and the resurrection. Other days, it's other important topics, different teachings of God, you know, but on this day, it's in remembrance of, of, of this powerful thing that Jesus has done for us. Same for Christmas, the birth of Jesus. One day a year, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Now Christmas and Easter, it holds so much value and weight, doesn't it? But if we honestly kept the Christmas, kept, uh, Christmas uh, decorations that, remind, that, that we use to celebrate Jesus, not that you have to have decorations, but the manger scene, for example, if we kept that around all the year, it would lose its value. But when we have it for the Christmas season, we look at it and we remember and it holds so much value. Amen? On this day, we put our eyes
Christ, we, re we, we, we remember so much. We're putting our eyes only on the crucifixion and the resurrection. And it, 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 it gives us so much more value and power. Amen. So this is God's meaning, Jesus' meaning of doing it in remembrance. To not do it in a cheapened way is a religious routine. But to do it once in a while. So it carries so much value. That's why here at Fivefold Church, we do it on Easter, on Resurrection Sunday. We don't do it like other churches do every month or something. So it can hold value and power because this is what the Holy Spirit has released. This is his meaning of in remembrance. Amen? Can we pass around the, the it's passed around right now. Praise God. So we're gonna take it right now and I want, before we take it, you to take a moment where you really renew your mind with what this is that you are doing as I just explained. Where you renew your mind, you put your eyes to Jesus being wounded, being scourged, his flesh ripping out, of, coming out of his body, his blood being sprayed everywhere. And him on the cross, his nails in his hands, on his feet. The crown of thorns on his head, the, all the blood coming out of all these different areas of his body. This was releasing healing and deliverance and salvation to you today. There is power in this blood. And so there's power in his body that was broken for you. So right now, take this body not as bread, but as Jesus's, take this bread not as bread, but as Jesus's body right now. And take it as it's releasing power to you right now. Take and eat it. Receive his power. You just and took his body. Receive the power of God of his body in you right now. Living inside of you. Hallelujah. Look at Jesus being being beaten for your healing. Think about the healing you have received, the freedom you've received, and think about the healing that you need, the freedom that you need, and look at Jesus now being scourged. Look at his blood coming out of his body right now. Look at the blood coming out of his body on the cross. That blood was purchasing for you salvation, abundant life, healing, freedom. Eternity with Jesus in heaven, saving you from torment and torture from the devil. Look at his blood. See the power of his blood. Look at, the, look at this juice, which is blood. It, it is blood in the spiritual realm. It is his blood. Look at this blood in your hand right now. See the power in it to heal you right now as you drink it. You don't need to wait for a prayer. You can receive his healing right now. There is power in this communion, in this drink right now, this, this blood. Drink it now. Receive his blood now in you. Receive his healing power in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you. You can have a seat right now. 
Thank you for your healing and your freedom that you have given right now to your people, God. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to give to God right now. And, you know, Jesus calls us to be like him, and Jesus didn't call us to go on a cross. That's only what he could do. He doesn't call us to go on a cross. He doesn't call us to be scorched. But he does call us to live a life of sacrifice. Amen. When we give to God, we don't give just to go through the motions. We don't give only to, uh, for physical reasons, to the obligation of supporting the church that you're a part of, which is important. But we don't give just for that reason. We give because a sacrifice is pleasing to God because he asks us to make sacrifice. And because as the Bible says, when you lose your life, then you will find it. Lose your life in every area. Lose your love of money. Lose your, your, your feeling of control over money. Your comfort financially. Lose that too. And make sacrifice to Jesus financially. So into his work. Amen. So as you give today, this seed is, is to be a sacrifice to God. to thank you for what he's done for your life, for this sacrifice that he made for you. And also, I see God releasing a special anointing upon this seed of protection. Like of, of ways that in the past you have denied Jesus, you have failed tests. But God sees your heart now that you don't want to fail tests, that you want to be a good disciple, that a good student, a good disciple, that you would pass tests, that you wouldn't disappoint Jesus. And so upon this seed, I see God releasing grace, a, a, a special grace and a special protection and helping you to be strong and pass tests and be wise in the spirit, seeing the devil's schemes and having victory always. If you'd like to sow into Fivefold Church, we have a QR code if you'd like to give online. You can, there's a QR code on the giving envelopes on your chair as well. You can go to 5fchurch.org give. And those of you watching online, you can go to the 5fchurch.org, 5fchurch.org give or the link in my bio on Instagram or 5F Church's Instagram. Just lift your seeds up right now or your hands if you're still preparing or, or your phones. I release this anointing upon you, upon your finances, and I declare there to be reward and increase upon this sacrifice. I declare provision to come to you for all that God's asked you to do for all of your needs let there be provision may doors open up now in Jesus name and I release this anointing over you of protection and and strength to you to pass every test of the, t the every test that comes your way that you would have victory that you would be changed from today where you would fail tests a lot you would pass every one of them in Jesus name receive this anointing to be sharp and strong in the spirit humility to be important to you the fear of God to be important to you in Jesus name amen you can come forward with your seat
He is alive. 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 He is here right now. He is alive and he is moving in power now to heal and deliver right now. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. If you if you know you need freedom, if you if you know if you sense demonic oppression manifesting, come to the front right now and receive freedom. Receive freedom from Jesus. God is so proud of you. And it's time for freedom right now. It's time from free for freedom from your past. I see mistreatment upon your life. The people have mistreated you. People have spoken bad words about you. And the enemy has also come in your mind with confusion, speaking against your identity. And it's time for freedom from all of this bondage right now. Thank you, Jesus. I break every word curse that has been spoken over your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I cancel every demonic soul tie that led to the devil's voice in your head speaking against you with confusion. And I declare every spirit that came through abuse, every spirit of confusion, every spirit speaking in your mind against your identity, I declare all must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I speak complete freedom for you now. Be free from your past. In Jesus' name, I release the Holy Spirit to fill you, to fill you to overflow right now. May the power of God fill you. May his love come and fill you, and may peace and joy fill you now. In Jesus' name, may God give you his thoughts, that your mind would be full of God's thoughts from now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You here, hon? Can you come a little closer, hon? God is freeing you right now, hon. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I break every generational curse off of you. I break every curse of witchcraft that has come upon your life. This going to other healers that's happened in the family. I break those curses of witchcraft that came upon that came with that. And I declare every spirit of infirmity. I declare every spirit of depression and every spirit of stagnancy, every spirit of division that's brought division in your family. I declare all must leave you now in Jesus name. Thank you Jesus. Be healed. Receive peace and joy and abundant life now in Jesus name. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You, hun? You, hun, can you come right here? Right here, hun. Hallelujah. God is touching you right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I see just this light around you. I see you are so you are so encouraging and kind to people and generous. And I see you being selfless so many times, just helping people, helping family. And God sees this and he's so proud of you. And I see you being overlooked many times. And people not seeing your heart. 
God sees you and he's so proud of you. He sees you every second of every day. He sees all of these good things you've done, helping your people, helping God's people. Thank you, Jesus. I speak right now every generational curse to be broken off of you now. Every curse of lack in Jesus' name. Lack in the family. I break that curse now. And I declare every spirit that speaks against your identity. Every spirit making you to be overlooked. Every spirit bringing halting must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I release this anointing to you. May the fire of the Holy Spirit come upon you. And may your light shine brighter from now. May your light for Jesus, your star, be restored in you that you would no longer be overlooked, no longer have no's, but there would be open doors and favor upon your life in Jesus' name. And I, speak, I see a family member suffering with something, like a sickness. I see God touching them now. I speak healing to them. I send this anointing to them now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is touching you right now. He's freeing you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I break every curse and upon your life. And I declare every spirit that torments the mind, every spirit of anger, of addiction, every spirit of death must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Be free completely now. Be free of everything that held you back from living a life following the Spirit of God. Your past is wiped away. From now, it is wiped away. You are new today. You are no longer a slave to sin. Thank you, Jesus. Be filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit now. Be filled with peace and joy now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. God, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is delivering you right now, hon. He's freeing you right now. Thank you, Jesus. I see so much weight on you weight, weight from the past that holds you back like you feel heavy. God is freeing you from this now. From all of these things in the past you've been involved with that brought this darkness and from these bad past relationships, I break every demonic soul tie now in Jesus' name. And I declare every spirit of witchcraft, manipulation, every spirit of abuse, every spirit of depression, of anxiety, every spirit bringing these weights, draining physically, emotionally, I declare all must go now. 
in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are free. You are free. I release this anointing to you now, and I declare peace, abundant peace and joy to fill you, and that you would be full of light and the energy of the Holy Spirit. Strength in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. What? Stage four cancer. Jesus is your healer. And his blood is so powerful to heal any kind of sickness. Thank you, Father. I break every generational curse off of you, every generational curse of sickness. I remove every curse upon your life, curse of death. Every word curse and diagnosis spoken against your life, I break it now. And I remove all witchcraft done upon your life and words spoken from past generations, from worshiping false gods in past generations, curses that came upon you, I break them now off of you. I declare you to be removed from this generational curse and sins in Jesus' name. Now, I declare every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of death, must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. This cancer must be gone from now. Be healed. Be healed in your body now. Receive the power of God now. May it fill your body the power of God now over every cell. Receive abundant health, abundant life. Receive peace and joy in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. God is setting you free right now. God is setting you free. Thank you, Jesus. He's delivering you right now. Thank you, God. I see so much trauma in your past. God is removing it now. And this trauma has led to you doing things you didn't want to do, leading you down a wrong path. But God is delivering you now from this demonic force that's pulled you wrong ways. Thank you, Jesus. I break every curse off of your life now in Jesus' name. Every generational curse, I break it now. And I declare every spirit that came through abuse, every spirit of darkness, every spirit of death, every spirit of murder, every spirit of anger, and every spirit of addiction must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God just delivered another here. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come. I release this anointing to you. Be free completely. Have peace. And joy fill your life now. May you live a life led by the Spirit from now. Your past is gone. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you. God, we praise you. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is, is this your, your, your son, hon? What's, what's wrong? He has developmental delay and regression. And he's, um, and he's also funny, difficult to speak. Uh, and he sometimes scrapes himself and bites. And he, and he uh, uh, struggles to eat. God is going to break this curse now and touch him. I break every generational curse off of you and him now. And I de- every spirit bringing developmental delay, every spirit bringing all of these issues, every spirit bringing any kind of mental problem, every spirit of witchcraft must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I speak this heaviness to come off of you now. And the weight, the weight you've carried, the depression, it must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. God's hand is upon your life, is upon your son's life. I release this anointing to you. May peace and joy fill you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. God is freeing people here right now who have things from the past that were really are holding them back. I see a lot of people don't feel they're worthy because of their mistakes, because of the size of their mistakes, because of their past. I see, I see some people feel like, you know, you've been a believer for maybe one year or maybe five years or even 10 years, but maybe for 30 years you were sinning and doing bad things. And so I see some of you are like trapped in this lie that it outweigh, your past outweighs your new life. But God is speaking now. The past is gone completely. It doesn't matter if it was one year of sin, one day of sin, or 90 years of sin. It doesn't matter the kind of sin, the, how big the sin, murders. It does not matter. It's all wiped away. You are new. And I see that it's, it's whole, it's been, this lie has been holding people back from receiving the love of Jesus, the forgiveness of Jesus, and the, the, the truth that God has called you to big things. So I declare right now, everything from the past, weight pulling you back. Like I see like in the spiritual realm, a tie and weights. A weight with every sin is like pulling some of you back. I cut that tie now. And I declare those weights gone from you now in Jesus' name. All of the heaviness gone. I declare everything from the past, everything from abuse, everything from the sins, every spirit that came from those things, every spirit of addiction, every spirit of rage, every spirit of depression, every spirit of suicidal thoughts must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May you be light for Jesus. May you have joy. May you see who you are, your new identity from now. May you be confident in Christ that he has called you to great things. And you're worthy because he says it. Not because we deserve it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You here, hon. Yes, I see God touching you and your family. Did you come from somewhere? You live in L.A. Miami. You came from Miami. What did you come for? What brought you here? Their family brought them here. What did you come believing God for today? as a family. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Can you come closer, all of you? Right there is good. Thank you, Jesus. I speak right now everything that's been holding you back. 
must be broken off of this family now. Every spirit of witchcraft must go. In Jesus' name. Every last spirit of witchcraft that has been holding her back, that has come from past generations, must leave her on three in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wants to renounce anxiety, anger, rage. Every, every, everything generational from her family. Every, um, HDHD. Every fear. In the, in the name of Jesus, I right now. No, let me put you back on. Every uh, that our uh, this uh, that their generation will. I break every generational curse and I detach you from all of these things. I declare every spirit attached, anxiety, rage, everything must go. Now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Receive this anointing now. Receive this anointing now. Receive peace and joy. Be filled with his spirit now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come a little closer. Thank you, Jesus. I release this anointing to you all now. I speak complete freedom, healing, and this anointing to fill your lives that God would use you powerfully in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is this your, your mom? Praise God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. God is releasing his power upon you all right now. I declare every generational curse broken now in Jesus' name. I declare every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of depression, every spirit of death must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. This weight must be lifted now in Jesus' name. I release this anointing to you. I speak the healing power of God to fill your life and body. Be at peace. God is in control. God's hand is upon your life, upon your family's life. Be at peace. Be filled with joy in Jesus' name. Be at peace in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Father. I see God delivering people here from generational issues, generational sicknesses, and recurring um, addiction in families, recurring rage in families. This is spiritual. I break every generational curse off of you all now in Jesus' name. And I declare every spirit of rage and addiction and infirmities, cancer must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. God's hand is upon your life. You in the green jacket right here. God's hand is upon your life. He is removing all of these issues that there's been worries about. He's taking care of everything. And I just see him speaking this word of encouragement. His hand is upon your life. No worries necessary. He is rectifying everything. Thank you, Jesus. What's that? Amen. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I release this anointing to you, and I speak peace to fill you. Be at peace. Be free of all these worries. Be free of your past. Thank you, Lord. All of these demonic thoughts, these negative thoughts, go from you. Receive his peace overflowing now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I see his hand over your family. His hand over your family. Protection. Peace. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You here? confess every sin that have I have hidden. Fui violada cuando yo era niña. She was raped when she was a child. Y después muchas veces fui violada, pero y después de eso fui bisexual. I was I was raped. I was raped a lot of times, and then I was bisexual, and I want God to change me. Amen. Amen. I want God to heal everything, and I want to change my life. I have suffered a lot. It's time for freedom, and God is so proud of you. He has just wiped away your past right now and forgiven you completely. Thank you, Jesus. I detach you from all of this, and I declare every spirit that came through abuse, that came through rape, every spirit that speaks against your identity in Christ, I declare all must go from you now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Be free. Thank you, Jesus. I speak healing to your heart. Healing all over your mind in Jesus' name. And I release this anointing upon you. May peace fill you. Thank you, Jesus. May your thoughts be God's thoughts. May you see yourself as he sees you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And I see many of you here having abuse in the past that shaped your future, and God is removing it now. The root that has stayed with you, that has affected the course of your life and your mind, how you think and how you see in a demonic way. God is freeing you now. I declare every spirit that came from abuse, from rape, I declare all must go from you now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Be free from the past. Be free now in Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Father. I speak healing to your heart. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare that this week, this week, let there be peace and joy abiding in you. This week, may you walk in the love of God and the revelation of his power in your life like never before. May you walk in victory. May you have wisdom and eyesight in the spiritual realm to see the, uh, the, 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 the ways of the devil, the, 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 the schemes of the devil, and have victory over them all. In Jesus' name. I declare this week to be a week of redemption and restoration. That what you've lost, that areas of mistakes in the past, that things would be restored in your life. That you would go higher. You wouldn't stay the same. You wouldn't go backwards, but you would be catapulted higher in the spiritual realm. That the way you've been held back from the past, making you to not be a powerful vessel of God because you live in the lie of the devil. That is removed from now, I declare. So I declare the devil's lies shall not hold you back this week in Jesus' name. But you would be a more powerful vessel of God than ever this week. And you would walk by the Spirit this week more than ever in Jesus' name. May the resurrection power of Jesus be in you and move through you this week, I declare in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be filled with his peace and his joy. Be filled with this anointing, this power of God. May God use you mightily and powerfully this week. In Jesus' name, let this revival increase through you. In Jesus' name, let the fire spread more. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus for what he has done. Praise Jesus for what he has done today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy of a big praise. Let's praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to praise God some more, but I want to remind you, don't forget to testify. And some of you, God is even calling you the areas you've been quiet or denied to start speaking, to start testifying. Amen. So you go in the front and we'll share your, we'll video your testimonies. God bless you. We'll see you at the same time and place next week. And we're going to praise him right now. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my dream till I met you. I was breathing. I'm hey. 